Hi, my name is Jenny Dennison. I am currently a second grade teacher at Harvard Park Elementary, and I am taking a master's class for special education in hopes of getting my master's in special education. Um, special education has been a huge part of my life ever since I was a little kid because I was a special ed student. Um, I have epilepsy. Um, it's something I've had my whole entire life and I've gone through bouts of remission where I've done better. I've, it's been a roller coaster ride. And when I was younger, they didn't know where to fit me because I had some learning um, issues due to the epilepsy um, because I lost track of time, my memory was affected. Um, but at the same time, I didn't really qualify for special needs, but I didn't really qualify for a general education classroom. I was kind of like stuck in the middle. And in today's world, I would be in a general education class. And I think that is amazing to know um, because inclusion is so incredibly important and finding the right type of classroom for every student is incredibly important because it shapes who we are. It shaped who I was. I didn't have the best experience in my special education class because my lead, my knees were a lot lower. They didn't get met. Um, so I kind of floundered all through um, elementary into um, the first part of junior high. It wasn't until my mom um, took me out and put me in private school and I was in a general education class that I really kind of just was able to flourish and find who I was as a person, um, find people that really wanted to sit down and work with me and help me and make me the best student that I can possibly be. And to be honest, if it wasn't for them, I would not be sitting here today. So my passion for special education comes from a background of being a special needs kid. And it wasn't always um, a good experience for everyone. It was not a good experience for me because I didn't feel like I fit in. I knew that was not the right classroom for me. Um, I wanted to be with my peers. And that's why inclusion is so incredibly important. And my whole goal is to take everything that I learned and put it into my general education class so that my students that come in that are special needs, that were kids like me, they can get their needs met. Um, and there is so many needs that teachers um, need to really concentrate on. It's not just academics. It's teaching them life skills, making sure that they are prepared for the world that is going to come in the future. That way they can have it be successful in every job and in every relationship that they have. Um, so as a special education teacher, your role um, is many. You have to make sure that you are meeting the needs of every single student that you have there. And it's all going to be different levels. So how are you going to do that? How are you going to plan that? Well, the first thing that you need to do is get to know your students. Read all the information that you can about your future students through IEPs, 504s, talk to the other teachers. Don't create biases. Make your own assumptions, but look at the academics. How much did they grow that year? Did they grow that year? Where is their weakness academically and start there? Because I can tell you from experience, I was a different student in the special needs class than I was in junior high when I finally got to that general education class. I wasn't very nice to my special needs um, teachers because I was frustrated and I was angry and I didn't want to be there. And if my teachers um, that were in my general education class looked at the comments, they would have already had this bias of me, of who I was as a person that was not accurate. I was not a mean person. I was just frustrated and I just wanted someone who was going to look at me and say, okay, I got you. We're going to help you. You are going to grow so much this year. You are going to learn so much. Doors are going to open. If they had listened to the other teachers, it would have been a repeat of the same exact cycle. And I would not be sitting here. I would not be a teacher. I probably would have given up, 
So the biggest role a special education teacher has is to teach them confidence. It's not math. It's not reading. It's believing in themselves because when they believe in themselves, the math is going to happen. The reading is going to happen. So that SEL portion that was missing so much in my life is the reason why it exists in my classroom today. And I do it in so many different ways. The kids have no clue that I have spent hours and hours thinking the best way to teach them confidence, to teach them to believe in themselves. And my daughter makes fun of me, but my students love my puppets. I have a whole bin full of puppets and they each have a different personality and they all have a different SEL lesson that goes with it. I have one that is um, has anxiety and is always worried about things. I have one that's kind of not nice kind of a bully and it teaches them that I became a bully because I was bullied and to kind of put yourself into other people's shoes. That's how I'm teaching my students. Is that the only way to teach? No, there are many different ways. But making sure that your lessons are creative, engaging and to what they need, not only academically, but personally, you're going to see so much growth. The number one mistake that my teachers made was not believing in me. And it's something that I am not going to do to my students. I want them at the end of the year when they say goodbye, Miss Dennison, to have the confidence of going to the next level. All right, I'm going to third grade. I'm going to do this. I did so well this year. I made so much improvement. And so they go into the next year with that confidence. And that confidence builds and builds and builds. I do this through modeling. If, the, if my students saw me sad or depressed, and I've gone through a lot in my life, I've had bad days just like everybody else. They would mirror that. The classroom dynamics would change. So your personality has to be positive, uplifting, encouraging from the beginning of your day to the time you say goodbye. And you know what? It helps me. So when I do get out of bed and I don't feel like having a good day because we've all been there, I remember my students need me. And that saying, fake it till you make it, well, it works. In the beginning, I'm just kind of, woohoo, hi guys, like trying to get through. But by 10 minutes in, I'm naturally smiling. I'm excited for the day. I'm watching my kids learn and I'm seeing growth and that excites me. And it turns my bad day into a really good day. A lot of what goes in to being a good teacher comes from your personality and it comes from your belief system. Believing that all students can learn, every single student. I have never met a student that could not learn. I don't believe in it. I believe education is for everybody. When I walk into a room I don't have these perceived notions of what my students are going to be like. I look at their test scores. I look at their education. But a lot of times, I don't really look at the comments. I'll look at them, but I don't take them into my head and into my heart. Because I know that a teacher can make the difference in how they act. And I know that sometimes when teachers are frustrated... The students are frustrated. The class is frustrated. And then behaviors happen that wouldn't normally happen. And I know it from personal experience because very much was that kid. I don't want my students to come in there and think, oh no, another teacher. 
another teacher that's not going to believe in me. Another teacher that's not going to like me. That should never be anyone's goal. For me, the most important part of being a teacher is loving your students. Even the frustrating ones. Even the ones that at the end of the day, they exhaust you. And you come home and you're like, I need a nap. Love them. But when you come home, leave everything at that door. Because when you start talking and you maybe talk to a spouse about your day or your student, sometimes that frustration creeps in and it starts to change how you look at the student. And you don't want that. Confidentiality isn't just for meetings. It's for you. Because when you talk about your students to somebody else and it's not positive, it then becomes a cycle in your brain over and over and over again. And it kind of changes how you are with the student. All of my students from the beginning of class to the end of class will know that each kid is going to get what they need. Not everybody's going to get the same thing, but every student is going to get what they need. If they need a fidget, if they need flexible seating, if they need to sit in the front row, if they need to sit by my desk, if they need a timer or a visual or manipulatives, whatever they need to learn and to be able to function inside my classroom so that they can have a good day, that's what they're going to have. And it looks different for every single person. So teaching differences is incredibly important, but you have to be incredibly sensitive about it. When a student asks, well, why, why does so-and-so get a fidget and I don't? You don't say because they're different and they need it. Never use the word different. Never. It has such a negative connotation to it. You say, because he's, he's a little frustrated. Do you think you could go help him? Maybe he would like to sit by a friend and that would help calm him. He just needs it right now. I see that you don't need it. You look like you're having a really good day and that you don't have a lot on your mind right now. That student's really kind of sad or he's frustrated. Maybe you can help him. Or why do they get a hundreds chart and I don't? Well, because it's just something that's going to help them. You don't need one. You know them. They just need some help. Would you like to help them? I will never use the word different. There was even a couple of books that I had in, as a first year teacher that I threw out because in the title it says, we're all different. Different has a, such a negative meaning behind it. When you think different, you think weird or um, strange or things like that. When in reality, different means beautiful, means unique. And so in my classroom, we have a mantra and it says, mistakes are beautiful. We are all unique. Those are the two mantras that I have inside my classroom that we say every day. We are all unique. Because when you think of unique, you think of beauty. You think of something that's outstanding, something that catches your eye. When you think of mistakes, you're like, oh, no, that's negative. 
No, they're beautiful. They help you learn. They help you grow. They make you into who you are today. So as I end this video, you guys asked me in one of your questions, what is the special education teacher's role in supporting learning, improving planning and practice, upholding professional expectations and ethics, and collaboratively advancing the profession? And it's actually really simple. By being creative in your plans so that you can meet their needs, by teaching them self-confidence and to believe in themselves. To make sure that you're using positive language. You're collaboratively working with others without the biases. State the problem. If you're having a student that it has behavior, state the problem. My student gets really frustrated during math and tends to throw things. I'm having a hard time getting him engaged in math. What can I do? That's asking for help. That's not stating anything about a disability. They wouldn't even know, let's say that student had autism, they wouldn't know. They would just know that during math, this student tends to throw things because they are frustrated and we have to figure out a way to solve that problem. Those are so many different ways and there's actually many more because there's not one way to teach. There's many different ways. There's a rainbow of arrays of, ra huh, sorry, I can't talk of ways, ways, sorry, to teach. For instance, I just made a mistake. Does that make my, my speech any less powerful? No, it makes it more powerful. I saw the mistake. I corrected the mistake. I apologized for the mistake. I did everything that I want my students to do in that one mistake. So I'm gonna end with this. It's something I actually do a lot. I make mistakes in the classroom. I let them see me make mistakes in the classroom so they can see how to handle a mistake on their own. And if they laugh at my mistake, that's another lesson. Like, hey guys, has Ms. Dennison ever left when you made a mistake? Okay, the reason why I do that is because I don't want to hurt your feelings, but now my feelings are kind of hurt. Everything we do and we say should be a lesson to these kids. We should be a role model and teaching them what we want their future to look like for them. How are they going to function in this world? How are they going to interact with their peers? Because our students need that extra help. They don't always understand. And so it's something you have to do over and over and over again. And that's okay. It's okay. Because that one time, they're going to have that aha moment that every teacher lives for. It's like an adrenaline rush. You're like, oh yeah, they got it. They really got it. You can see it on their face. You can see how happy and excited they are. You're happy and excited for them. That should always be our end result. Thank you so much for listening. And I hope that um, you learned a lot through this. And I know I learned a lot um, and have been for many years. Um, I'm excited to see what I do in my future. 
I'm on my second year, going into my second year of general education, and I am really excited. So thank you so much.